I saw one barber slap a guy and then cut his hair. And the dude that got slapped was like, what, you never saw nobody get slapped and then get their hair cut? And I was like, well, no. All right, my name is Kenny Warren. My name is Kavon Walton. My name is Joshua Ross, aka Who is Joshua Ross? And today I'll answer your most curious questions. It's about being a barber. So that you can have some barbershop etiquette. How and what can we get for free? The one thing that I can definitely give you for free is advice. Nine times out of 10, you probably won't get an entire haircut for free. And you shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't expect to get a haircut for free because again, it is a service. Don't look for free stuff in a barbershop because it's probably going to come with some um, repercussions. So you know what? Birthdays, anniversaries. I might one day come in and or you might we might be having a conversation during the cut and I might feel, you know what? This one's on me today. If I see that your hesitation is because of a financial reason, but I know that it's gonna make the haircut, I may just do it because again, you are my walking billboard. You are my representation of my work when you step out of this chair. Should we ever pick a haircut from the chart? I mean, the best thing to do is to come in with a haircut that you already have like in your gallery, but make sure that it's as close to your hair type as possible. Yeah, that chart might be a little outdated. You might end up with a Nat King Cole fade. It may look good on the model on the chart, but it may not be exactly uh, the best fit for you. What is the appropriate tip for a haircut? I would say $5 if you're in a barbershop in Harlem. Now, if you downtown in Soho and you get a $75 haircut, drop the dub. Give them the whole 20. How much do you enjoy it? Tip what you feel your barber deserves. Give them extra. That's the man that makes you look better. Tipping is important. There can be some preferential treatment that goes on if you're not a good tipper. You might get uh, that left-handed shape up, you know? The shape up with the, the weak hand. And it probably shouldn't be like that, but it's just the way that it is. Then you laugh at us when we tear up from the alcohol. It's probably my favorite part of the haircut. Grown men <laughs> squirm from the alcohol when it hits their neck. Absolutely, and I like to, you know, finesse them a little bit, you know, be real, you know, nice and gentle at the end part. Probably the most vulnerable state that comes with getting a haircut. You know, and don't take off the cape first. I got a spray bottle, so I just shh, shh, shh. It wakes them up, but it lets them know that they got a good haircut. If you don't have that burn, then the clippers didn't work. I used to laugh. However, if you spray alcohol on your hand and you don't have a cut, does it burn? If your answer is no, then what's that tell you about when you get hit with alcohol after a fresh haircut? Your barber cut you, which means you should probably choose a new barber. What are signs of a bad barber? If you walk into a shop on a Friday, 1 p.m., and all the barbers is cutting except for one, don't go to that barber. If he stays in a spot for too long, uh, something's wrong. <laughs> I mean, we've all been in, in situations where we'll go to the barber shop, and next you know your barber's having a conversation for 20 minutes. If you step into a barber's chair and he automatically turns on the clippers and he, he's ready to go to work and he didn't even ask you exactly what you wanted and walked you through those steps, um, you might want to stop him in his tracks. Hygiene is a big thing. If he has halitosis, he might be a bad barber. Have you ever given someone a bad haircut? Yes. Do we have to go into detail? We all start somewhere. So I started cutting hair in 1986. There's been a whole lot of bad haircuts in 34 years, believe me. Remember where you started? And I was giving up horrible haircuts, but I was giving great shape ups. So that's what was saving me actually. People were still coming to me because of a shape up. For instance, we was watching um, Players Club in the barbershop like three days ago. Diamond was on stage, about to start stripping, and the dude in my chair couldn't control himself. He started shaking, and then he just turned his head real fast, and my clippers was cutting his afro, and it just went <laughs> It might have been close to being bald, but the only person that knew was me and him. What can a customer say if they don't like a haircut? I'm an honest barber, so if the haircut isn't right, I'm already feeling like if they complain, I'm gonna give them that haircut on the house. I'm a very open and honest person. You can tell me what you don't like, but some people don't know how to take confrontation well. You know, be straight up with your stylist or your barber and just let them know what it is that you don't like. Don't do it via text messages though. Don't do it via text message and don't do it on social media. Those are two horrible reasons or ways to do it. What is the most annoying things customers do? I got you, I act it out. They do this. While I'm trying to do a shape up, they're like this. Can't do the shape up if you're in your phone. It just, it doesn't happen. 
So when your barber is eating his lunch, if you come into the shop, the last thing he wants to hear you say is, okay, go ahead, take your time. And he's thinking like, I was gonna take my time. When customers stare at me directly in my eyes while I'm providing a service to them, it's creepy, man. Like, it's just like, what are you looking at? Like, are, are you nervous? You think I'm not doing my job correct? Do you like me? Like, now I'm nervous. Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Why, why are you looking at me so intensely? Do all barbers have licenses? Do all drivers have licenses? Of course not. The people that started in the barber school are usually the people that aren't cutting hair when you go to a shop on Friday at 1 p.m. You want to get somebody that came up through the, through the streets and, you know, got experience, and then they got their license, and then they became a professional. Can you tell when people cut their own hair? Yes, you know, the world was like shut down for like three months. When we opened back up, there was a lot of self-cuts and we could tell that you tried something and then let your hair grow a little bit. Because it's usually uh, somewhere in the back where it starts to look like an elevation map. That's when we know that that was a home cut. When you're in a mirror and you're moving your hands to the left, it looks like it's going right. And that can be quite confusing. So I can definitely see when a hair is pushed back. It could be, you know, a football game. And instead of paying attention to the play, I'm like, who cut his hair? Like, why is his hairline like that? We're professionals for a reason. And this is, there's a reason why, you know, we went to school longer than cops went to training. But there's no other conversation. Who do barbers let cut their hair? Now, in my shop in Harlem, I'm your man. I'm your favorite barber's barber. I cut the dude who you think is the best barber. I started cutting hair on myself when I was 12. You know, I just don't have the time or energy for any mishaps, so I, I just cut it myself. I cut my own hair. I just cut my hair before this, how I'm looking. What can you say when you don't want to talk to a barber? They don't want to talk to you, don't force it, because they'll go to somebody who doesn't talk. That's it. You lose a customer by talking too much. I have clients who come in, I already know it's a conversation. Some I have that are doing day trading in my chair. So they're doing their work day during the cut. If you don't want to be blunt, just kind of give like a one word answer. Or don't really engage in the conversation and just get quiet. And then I'll catch that signal. I'll know. Because the conversation always makes the hair cut longer. Are you offended if we go to another barber? No, because Nine times out of 10, you'll probably be back. People are always looking for a new barber, man. People move to New York City all the time. I think I got about five new clients this week. When I was younger, when I was a younger barber, yes. I was very offended. As an older, wiser barber, I've also realized that you can't cut everybody in the world. And there's clients that you're gonna share with other barbers. If you go to someone else, it's cool. Just don't go to someone else that's not in my shop. Cause now we got beef. Like keep the money in the shop. Well y'all, those were the questions that were like highly suggested. Hope you learned something today. Peace.